بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان احسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار uh, we start today's lesson with the explanation of Sheikh Ahmed bin Yahya An-Najmi rahimahullah ta'ala and this will complete our discussion of the Fifth principle from the six principles of Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab Rahimahullah ta'ala So the fifth principle as a, a recap Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab Explains the difference The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Has clearly distinguished Between the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's ex- explained their characteristics And distinguished them from Those who try to resemble them From the enemies of Allah From the hypocrites and sinners And the shaykh then went on to Bring three citations from the Quran Three verses uh, from, from the Quran In which this differentiation Has been made By way of example There are many verses But the shaykh mentioned three To illustrate and to, uh, to illustrate and exemplify This difference So from those verses Say if you truly love Allah قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ If you truly love Allah, then follow me. Allah will then love you. And likewise the ayah in Al-Ma'idah O you who believe, if any of you turns back on his faith, then soon will Allah bring a people whom he loves, and they will love him. And likewise the ayah in Surah Yunus أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلِيهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ Verily, the friends of Allah, there is no fear upon them, nor shall they grieve. Those who believe, those who have iman, وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ And those who have taqwa, those who fear Allah. Then the shaykh went on to explain how many of those who began to claim knowledge, those who claimed knowledge and claimed that they were leaders and guides for the people and preservers of the sharia, these people began to claim that the true awliya, they are the ones who leave following the messengers. That anyone who follows the messengers, they cannot be from the awliya. And that a person must abandon striving for the sake of Allah and leave iman and taqwa. Because anyone who adorns himself with iman and taqwa, he cannot be from the awliya of Allah. This is the essence and the gist of the principle that we have been discussing. So the Shaykh, Shaykh Najmi Hafzullah Ta'ala, he begins by stating that in this principle, in this foundation, the Shaykh is revolving around the Sufiya. Who are the ones being spoken of by the Shaykh in this principle? He is revolving his speech around the Sufiya, the Sufiya who were present in his time. And the Shaykh then explains, there's an explanation in the notes regarding this word Sufiya. Where does this word originally come from? And the word comes from the, uh, the root, the word Suf, with a Sad, Waw, and a Fa. And the Shaykh goes on to explain that there are numerous linguistic meanings that are given to this word. From those meanings is that it refers to the wool of an animal. And likewise the word suf can also refer to something that swerves from its target. It deviates and swerves away from its target. It can also mean to swerve, uh, as an example, wasafa and ishar, that he swerved away from evil. So these are the linguistic meanings of the word suf. But as for the word in its usage as we commonly use it to refer to the sufiyah, then the Shaykh says there are two uh, meanings or two definitions which are given. The first of them is 
that it refers to the people, the mutasawwifa, those who are known to wear a certain type of garment. They wear a certain type of garment. And this garment represents that they have abandoned the pleasures, the permissible pleasures, those pleasures which are permitted, and they live a life of abstinence. This is one general definition. And the second definition is that at the sawwuf, as it is correctly understood, in the very first time and in the very first period, is that it is to be sincere in one's actions to Allah, and to abandon the world, and to abandon all of those things that incite, you know, those objectives and those motives that lead a person to seeking fame, and instead turning to humility and modesty, and likewise lessening one's desires, killing off one's desires, so one is not put to trial by the desires of the soul. So the Shaykh says that this definition of tasawwuf is upon the tasawwuf that was present in the very, very first time, the very first period. In other words, in the period when there was nothing fundamentally wrong with this type of tasawwuf. So after explaining this word Sufiya, we continue that the ones who are being referred to by Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab are those Sufis that developed in the later times, those who began to claim miracles and amazing feats, and they began to manifest certain conditions and states to the people, meaning that they would... Uh, find themselves in certain states and conditions that appeared to represent piety and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, miraculous feats and things of that nature. And they began to think that a sheikh, the one who is a true sheikh and a true wali, is the one who when he reaches nearness and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reaches such a level that all of the religious obligations now are no longer upon him. So therefore, he can drink wine, he can drink alcohol. And some of them say that when he drinks wine and alcohol, it turns into milk in his mouth. And likewise, and this is because they, they claim that the sheikh has uh, 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 achieved such a level, that even if he eats and consumes these things, they become halal for him. And likewise they claim that when one of these people, one, one of these so-called alleged walis of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he commits fornication with a woman, they say that he has simply, his light has simply enveloped her. His light has, em, you know, it has emanated from him and has enveloped her. So they use all of these different uh, descriptions when they see their sheikhs performing these feats and miracles and astounding things and things which are haram and they say that this one is the true wali of Allah why? because he has now reached such a level with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through whatever ways and means they claim and he's reached such a level that now the takalif the obligations, the responsibilities are now relieved from him and the Sheikh refers the reader here to a book, he says, whoever wants to know more details about the Sufis, about their kufr, about their disbelief, about their claims, their broad, wide claims that they make about the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal, without them you know, having any concern or care, then a person should refer back to the book Al-Kashf an sufiyati li awwali marrah. Unveiling the Sufis for the very first time is the translation of the title of this book. And likewise, another book, Hadihi Hiya Sufiya, This is Sufism, by Abdurrahman al Wakil. And then the Shaykh says that some of them have even claimed that they boast and they say that the Shaykh is the one he, that he reaches such a level that he is one who sees Allah with the eyes, with the vision of the eyes, and that he speaks to Allah. 
and that he meets the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And all of these are just mere claims, fancy claims. Shaitan has played with them by way of these claims and has led them astray from the path. And instead he has taken them out towards the path of the people of the fire. These people they claim that they are the awliya of Allah exclusively to others, that only they are the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then anyone who follows the book and who follows the sunnah and who is concerned with the ahadith, the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah and the athar, the narrations, and he speaks about fiqh, he speaks about jurisprudence, he teaches the people the rulings, and he orders the people to have istiqama upon the sharia of Allah, to remain steadfast and firm upon the obligations and keep away from the prohibitions. Then such people, they call them the Ahlul Zahir. The Ahlul Zahir, the people of the outward appearance. That's what they say. The people of the outward appearance. And then they claim that the, 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 that the sheikhs of the Sufis, they are Ahlul Batin. They are the people of the inner realities, the inner truths, the inner uh, realities. This is what they say. This is what they claim. And in fact, when we look into the history of these people, we see that the Sufis, they came, the Sufis who are upon this particular type of belief and this particular type of extremism, they came in a period in the uh, 5th and 6th centuries. In fact, their roots, have, they have numerous roots. There are different elements and aspects to the appearance of these types of Sufis. There is Kalam, there is the Batiniya, there, there, are, there is Falsafa philosophy. But there are numerous roots. And what these people did is that when they saw the debates between the people of Kalam who were arguing about Allah's names and attributes, and they saw the people of philosophy, those who were affected by the Greek philosophers, likewise arguing about Allah and you know, in the way that they were speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they decided that this cannot be the way to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Neither through the way of aql, aql which is reason, which is what the people of kalam were using, they were, deba- they were debating and arguing, by way of reason and nor by way of what the philosophers were saying and nor what the people of the sharia the people of the kitab and the sunnah nor what they were saying so they decided that instead of the aql and instead of the shara the legislation they resorted instead to al-kashif al-kashif and al dhawq which means al-kashif is sudden revelation sudden revelation and al means the spiritual exercise and the taste and the feeling and the ecstasy one receives when he performs spiritual exercise and which takes him to such a, a, a level, a heightened level of spirituality that he's now reached a level where he will receive sudden revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that this must be the way to know the truth because those other ways that we've seen these people trying, you know, uh, uh, messing around with, of the aql, of, of arguing by way of reason, and so on and so forth, that cannot be correct, because there's so many contradictions, and so much uh, dis- discrepancy. And so this must be the way. And so they, they were pushed in this way, and in this direction, there were numerous different factors, but they were pushed in this direction, and from this also emanates the development of the idea of Wahdatul Wujud, the unity of existence. Allah is one thing and is all of existence. All of these affairs are connected. There is a history as to how this belief and this extreme form of Sufism actually came to be. So, these people, uh, as we said, they rely upon Kashf and Dhawq. Kashf, sudden revelation, and Dhawq, meaning taste and uh, ecstasy and feeling. And what they say is that the rulings of the Sharia are just the apparent aspects of the religion. These are just for the average common people 
And as for us, we know the inner realities. We've reached the inner realities. Why? Because we receive revelation from Allah directly. And they say, some of them say that their way is superior to the way of the prophets. Because their revelation is continuous. And this is how, this is the level of misguidance that they have fallen into. So they say that they are the Ahlul Batin. Ahlul Batin. They are the people of the inner reality. Batin with a noon. And the Shaykh says, Bal innahum haqiqatan hum ahlul batil. Ahlul batil. They are the people of batil. So we change the noon into a lamb. Ahlul batin. And we change it to ahlul batil. They are the people of batil. So Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala, he is complaining about the people of his time. Why? Because they made the true awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are concerned with the Qur'an, with the sunnah, the hadith, the athar, with fiqh, and tazkiyah, and tarbiyah, and istiqama, those people are concerned with his affairs, they treat them to be the enemies of Allah. And they waged a war against them in the most severest of ways. But we see, is the belief of these people, the belief of the, these claimed alleged awliya of Allah, is it the same as the true awliya of Allah? Is their belief, is their saying, is their statement, is their action the same as the true awliya of Allah? No, of course it isn't. Rather the true wali of Allah is the one who venerates the book of Allah. He venerates the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallam. And he follows the Messenger ﷺ in every saying, in every action, in every command, in every belief. And this is why we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ So if you truly love Allah, then follow me, follow me. He will love you, Allah will love you, and will forgive you your sins. And Allah is merciful, Allah is forgiving and merciful. And likewise he said in the ayah in Surah Yunus, أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلِيهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ Verily, the awliya, the friends of Allah, there is no fear upon them and nor shall they grieve. Those who believe, and have taqwa, those who have iman and have taqwa. And the Shaykh gives a very nice definition of who is the wali based upon this ayah. He says, he makes a comment and he says, Alladina amanu billah, those who believe in Allah, wa kanu yattaqoon Allah, and those who would have taqwa of Allah, wa yaf'aluna awamirah, those who perform his commands وَيَجْتَنِبُونَ نَوَاهِيهِ And who avoid his prohibitions وَيُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَيُؤْمِنُونَ بِوَعْدِهِ وَوَعِيدِهِ And who believe in Allah and who believe in his promise or in his threat and who believe in his promise وَبَعْثِهِ وَلِقَائِهِ And who believe in his resurrection and the meeting with him, وَجَنَّتِهِ وَنَارِهِ And who believe in his paradise and his fire, وَيُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ ذَلِكَ بِأَلْسِنَتِهِمْ وَأَقْلَامِهِمْ وَسُيُوفِهِمْ هَأُولَاءِ هُمُ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ And who strive in the path of Allah with their tongues, and with their pens, and with their swords, they are the true awliya of Allah. Then the Shaykh says that, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala has clarified the various differences between the awliya of ar-Rahman and the awliya of ash-Shaytan. And he says that the awliya of Allah, they are the people of hadith. They are the people of hadith. وَمُتَّبِعُ athar, The followers of the athar. Those who are the ones who compile the hadith and the athar who are concerned with them and revolve around them and preserve them and author works with respect to them 
and they act upon all of that and they call make da'wah to Allah around all of that they are the true awliya of Allah so beware and beware the shaykh says that you be deceived that those liars the people of those false claims that they deceive you in this regard وَبِاللَّهِ التَّوْفِيقِ And this is the end of the very brief description, a very brief explanation of the Shaykh. And to summarize our discussion, to end our discussion of this principle, uh, we can finish with a nice passage from Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala. And Ibn al-Qayyim, he says, he has a a beautiful passage in his book, Kitab al-Ruh, and he, re- he says here, الفرق بين, بين أولياء الرحمن وأولياء الشيطان That the difference between the أولياء of الرحمن and the أولياء of الشيطان أن أولياء الرحمن لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون هم الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون That the أولياء of الرحمن are the ones upon whom there is no fear and nor shall they grieve. They are the ones who believe and who have taqwa and they are the ones wahumul madhkurun fi awwali suratil baqarah they are the ones who are mentioned in the very beginning of suratul baqarah and in fact here ibn al qayyim he goes on to mention 10 passages in the quran in which the attributes and qualities of the awliya of ar rahman have been mentioned and so the first of them, he begins with Surah Al-Baqarah. The first five verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. In fact, he mentions ten passages. We won't have the time to read through all of them. I'll just quickly allude to what is in these passages. So the first five verses of Surah Al-Baqarah is the first passage he mentions. Then he says, and in the middle of Surah Al-Baqarah, when Allah says, وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ Or when Allah says, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِكِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ To the end of this ayah. This is Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah number 2, verse 177. Then he says, وَفِي أَوَّلِ الْأَنْفَالِ At the beginning of Surah Al-Anfal, which is the eighth surah of the Quran. Innamal mu'minun alladhina idha dhukir Allahu wajilat kulubuhum wa idha tuliyat alihim ayatuhu zadathum imana wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun. Alladhina yuqimun as salata wa mimma razaqanahum yunfiqun. Ulaika humul mu'minun haqqa lahum darajatun inda rabbihim. وَمَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِزْقٌ كَرِيمٌ The believers are those who when Allah's name is mentioned, their hearts tremble. When His verses are recited unto them, it increases them in Iman. And upon their Lord do they place their trust. Those who establish the prayer and give from what we have bestowed upon them. They are the believers in truth. They have ranks and degrees with their Lord and forgiveness and a noble, generous sustenance and provision. Then he says, وَفِي أَوَّلِ سُورَةِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ The beginning of Surah Al-Mu'mineen, the 23rd Surah of the Qur'an. At the beginning of this Surah, Allah mentions eight or nine qualities of the believers. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The believers are prosperous. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِئُونَ Those who are humble, submissive in their prayer. And then he continues, those who turn away from false, false speech and idleness, those who give the zakah, who preserve their, 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 who preserve their chastity, their private parts, except in relation to their spouses or that which their right hands possess, for in that they are not blameworthy. And he continues, and those who fulfill their trusts and fulfill their promises and watch over their promises, who safeguard their prayers, they are the ones who will inherit. They will inherit Al-Firdaus and they will remain therein forever. And then Ibn Al-Qayyim continues after this and he says, likewise the statement of Allah uh, which is at the end of Surah Al-Furqan, the 25th Surah. At the end of this Surah, Allah has 
described in detail the characteristics of the servants of Ar-Rahman wa ibadur rahman alladhina yamshuna 'ala al-ardi hawna wa idha khatabahum al-jahilun qalu salama the servants of Allah the slaves of Allah of Ar-Rahman are those who walk upon the earth in humility and when the ignorant address them they say salama peace وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا And those who spend the night in prostration and standing in front of their Lord. And the passage continues, uh, other qualities which are mentioned, they make dua to Allah to avert the punishment of the fire from them. When they spend, they spend in moderation, and they don't call upon any deity besides Allah. They don't kill another soul that Allah has made haram except for a due right. They do not commit fornication. And anyone who does that will be punished on Yawm Al-Qiyamah except the one who repents and believes and does righteous deeds. And for them he will turn their evil deeds into good deeds. To the end of the, the passage they don't witness any false speech. And they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow upon us with wives and children who are the pleasure of our eye and that we become leaders of the righteous. To the end of the passage, all of these are from the qualities of the awliya of Allah. This is the another passage that Ibn al-Qayyim has alluded to. And then he says, likewise, the statement of Allah, إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ And this is in Surah Al-Ahzab. The 33rd surah, verse number 35, when Allah says, إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْقَانِتِينَ وَالْقَانِتَاتِ وَالصَّادِقِينَ وَالصَّادِقَاتِ وَالصَّابِرِينَ وَالصَّابِرَاتِ وَالْخَاشِئِينَ وَالْخَاشِئَاتِ وَالْمُتَصَدِّقِينَ وَالْمُتَصَدِّقَاتِ وَالصَّائِمِينَ وَالصَّائِمَاتِ وَالْحَافِذِينَ فُرُوجَهُمْ وَالْحَافِذَاتِ وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَعَجْرًا عَظِيمًا See Allah mentioned the men and women who are described with all these qualities those who are Muslim, those who are believers those who are devout, those who are truthful, those who are patient those who are humble and submissive, meaning in their prayers those who give charity, those who fast those who safeguard their chastity, those who remember Allah often Allah has prepared for them a forgiveness and a mighty reward. Then he says, and likewise, the statement of Allah, Ala inna awliya Allah, la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun, alladhina amanu wa kanu yattaqoon. The ayah in Surah Yunus that we've mentioned many times, wa yakhshya Allah wa yattaqhi, fa ulaika humul faizun, that whoever obeys Allah and his messenger and fears Allah, has awe of Allah and has taqwa of him, they are the ones who are victor. They are the ones who are successful. This is in Surah Nur, Surah 24, verse number 52. And likewise, the statement of Allah, "Illa al-Musallin," to the end. This is Surah Al-Ma'arij, the 70th surah, from verse number 22 to 35. And again, here we see we have numerous descriptions of the the awliya of Allah. Those who pray, who are constant in their prayers, who, who know that from their wealth there is a right to be given, meaning to the one who is in need and the one who is prevented, you know, the one who doesn't have any means. And those who believe in the last day, they fear of the punishment of their Lord, and they preserve their chastity, and they fulfill their trusts. So Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned this as well. And then finally he says, and likewise, the statement of Allah, At-Ta'ibun, Al-Abidun, Al-Hamidun. To the end of the ayah. This is Surah Tawbah, the ninth surah, verse 112. Look at this beautiful ayah. At-Ta'ibun, those who repent. Al-Abidun, those who worship. Al-Hamidun, those who praise. As-Sa'ihun, Al-Raki'un, As-Sajidun. Those who are those who bow and prostrate, Al Amiruna Bil Ma'ruf, who command the good, Wanahuna Anil Munkar, and who prohibit the evil, Wal Hafiduna Li Hududillah, and those who safeguard the limits of Allah, Wabashiril Mu'minin, and give glad tidings to the believers. So 
Ibn al-Qayyim says that in all of these ayat, these are the awliya of ar-Rahman. He says, فَأَوْلِيَاءُ الرَّحْمَانِ هُمُ الْمُخْلِسُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ الْمُحَكِّمُونَ لِرَسُولِهِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ غَيْرَهُ لِسُنَّتِهِ وَلَا يُخَالِفُونَ سُنَّتَهُ لِغَيْرِهَا The awliya of ar-Rahman, they are the ones who are sincere to their Lord. They judge to his messenger in matters of haram and halal. They are the ones who for the sake of the sunnah, they oppose others. But they do not oppose the sunnah for the sake of others. فَلَا يَبْتَدِئُونَ وَلَا يَدْعُونَ إِلَىٰ بِدْعَةٍ They do not innovate, nor do they call to an innovation. وَلَا يَتَحِيَّزُونَ إِلَىٰ فِئَةٍ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ Nor do they gather, th- gather themselves together or ascribe or affiliate to any party or group other than Allah and His Messenger and His Companions. وَلَا يَتَّخِذُونَ دِينَهُمْ لَحْوًا وَلَعِبًا Nor do they take their deen as a mere idle play and sport. وَلَا يَسْتَحِبُّونَ سِمَاعَ الشَّيْطَانِ عَلَى سِمَاعَ الْقُرْآنِ وَلَا يُؤْثِرُونَ صُحْبَةَ الْأَفْتَانِ عَلَى مَرْضَاتِ الرَّحْمَانِ وَلَا الْمَعَازِفْ وَالْمَثَانِ عَلَى السَّبْعِ الْمَثَانِ So he says at the end, nor do they love to hear this type of devilish type of sound or this hearing over and above the hearing of the Qur'an. They do not like the company of those the people put to trial over the pleasure of Ar-Rahman. And nor do they give these you know, the ma'azif, the instruments and things of that nature, over and above the seven oft-repeated verses of the Qur'an, meaning Al-Fatiha. And then he continues and he says, And the awliya of Ar-Rahman, they never ever become confused with the awliya of a shaitan except to the one who has lost basira, the faqidul basira wal iman. The one who has lost basira and iman, only to such a person is, does it become confusing. Who are the awliya of Ar-Rahman and who are the awliya of a shaitan? And he continues and he says, How can it be that those who turn away from his book and from guidance and from his messenger and from his sunnah who oppose him, how can they be his awliya? How can they be his awliya? When they have set up opposition for him towards, meaning Allah and his messenger, and when they have turned away from the guidance of their Prophet and his path, they cannot be from his awliya. Rather, the awliya are only the muttaqoon. Only the muttaqoon. But most of them do not know. So the awliya of Ar-Rahman are the ones who love what he loves, and they call to that, and they wage war against anyone who departs from that. And as for the awliya of Ash-Shaytan, they are the ones who love what he loves in speech and action. And they call towards that and they wage war against anyone who prohibits them from all of this. So when you see a man who loves to listen to this shaitani sound and listening, and the mu'adhin of the shaitan, and the brethren of the shaitan, and he calls and invites to whatever the shaitan has permitted to them of shirk, and bida and fujur of shirk, innovations and sinfulness, then you know that he is then you know that he is from the awliya of shaitan. And if the affair becomes confusing upon you, then you have three scales of measure. There are three scales of measure you can use by which you can weigh this person. The first of them is his prayer. Is his prayer. His prayer and uh, his his love of the sunnah, his prayer and his love of the sunnah and its people. This is the first thing, the salah and his love of the sunnah and the, and its people. And secondly, by way of him making the people to flee from the people of the sunnah. In other words, he makes the people flee from the people of the Sunnah and from those who call to Allah and call to the Messenger. And thirdly, you know him 
by way of ittiba, following, making mutaba'ah, being pure in tawheed, and judging to the sunnah. All of these affairs, you measure and weigh a man by way of this, and then you will know his true and real condition. Do not weigh him by way of the kashf, by way of this claim of sudden revelation, or sudden enlightenment, nor any khariq, anything which is any feat or action which is out of the ordinary, any extraordinary feat that he, that he might claim, even if he walks upon the water, and even if he flies in the sky. Now, this is the end of the speech of Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, and this is a nice, beautiful uh, little passage, and especially the verses in the Qur'an that he has alluded to in this passage, which are all of the verses in the Qur'an which a believer should look at and act upon and implement so that he can be from the awliya of Allah, the successful awliya of Allah in this life and the next. And with that we conclude our discussion today of this fifth principle. And so inshallah ta'ala in the next lesson we will begin with the sixth and final principle beginning with the explanation of Shaykh Ubaid al-Jabri hafizahullah ta'ala walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala nabina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een.